Here's the overall structure of a trig substitution problem. Basically, there's going to be a square root in one of three forms. And each of these three forms is tied to the Pythagorean identity, either the form sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, or the form tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So instead of memorizing what I have written here, make sure you understand why each of these forms works the way that it does. Both examples that we've done so far are of this first form. We did 1 minus x squared inside the square root, and we did 4 minus x squared. So both of them fit the form a squared minus x squared. And of course, a squared doesn't have to be a perfect square. It could be like 5, for instance, and then a would be the square root of 5. But for those types of problems, think about the general structure, that you have something minus x squared, which looks like 1 minus x squared, or 1 minus sine squared of theta. And because that form can be replaced with cosine squared, that will simplify this square root greatly, because the constant minus x squared can all be replaced with just a cosine squared that can be simplified, and the square root of cosine squared just becomes cosine of theta. So because of that trig identity working the way that it does, it simplifies this square root greatly. And that's why this substitution, x equals sine of theta, works for this type of problem. So you'd let x equal a sine of theta, and then dx is always going to be whatever a is, a times cosine of theta d theta, and it turns out that square root is always going to equal a times the cosine of theta as well. And then when you substitute whatever your integral looks like, wherever it involves the square root of a squared minus x squared, that gets replaced with a cosine of theta. And then when you simplify, you're going to have an integral that just involves sine of theta and cosine of theta, which you may have to do using the methods we learned in the last unit on integrals with powers of sine and cosine. So that may turn into a problem that you already know how to do. Or it may simplify to an even simpler problem where you just have theta, for instance, to work with. So whenever you see the square root of a constant minus x squared, think letting x equal sine of theta. But again, don't bother memorizing that. Instead, make sure you can follow the logic and rederive it for yourself when you need to. That's the most reliable thing, rather than trying to memorize each possibility. So instead of a squared minus x squared, or a constant minus x squared, we could have x squared minus that constant, or we could have the sum of them. So a squared plus x squared, or of course you could write it x squared plus a squared either way. That's the second form. And in this case, you think similarly about x squared plus a constant looks like tangent squared plus a constant plus 1, and that equals secant squared. So because of that, the x squared is in the place of the tangent squared, so you'll let x be tangent of theta with this a to account for the a squared so that the simplification factors appropriately. And then you can follow through dx is just the derivative of that, so it'll be a secant squared. And it turns out that when you substitute that into the square root, the square root will always equal a times the secant of theta. You can simplify it every time if you choose to. You can run through the algebra, but it's always going to work out that way because it's going to be consistent from one to the next. And then lastly, if you have x squared minus a constant, think about how that looks like x squared minus 1, or how it looks like secant squared minus 1, which equals tangent squared, which is your hint that x should be secant of theta, which means dx will be secant times tangent, of course with the a in front of it if necessary, and then the square root will all simplify to a times the tangent of theta. Again, through the use of this Pythagorean identity right here, this version of it. So again, don't bother memorizing these three forms and the substitution for each case, but just remember that when you see the square root of x squared and a constant either being added or subtracted, you're either going to use sine, tangent, or secant, and just think about which one will simplify with the right Pythagorean identity. So think carefully through that, and then once you pick the right one, 
then dx and the square root follow predictably and then you can make your substitution and your integral will either be powers of sine and cosine or powers of secant and tangent and you know how to handle each of those based on what we did in the last unit.